any other scenes that are good, you let me know. Uh, uh, I, I wrote down like 10 more after the five. I was like, <laughs> I can't choose. <laughs> It's so it's so difficult. It is so difficult yeah. coming up with this. Uh, and I'm like, yeah, like you were saying, you know, you uh, you're switching things around. And like, I I didn't know, like, even just 20 minutes ago, I was like, just kind of refiguring it. And I'm like, yeah, oh, yeah. Uh oh, I don't know. I was like, honestly, I had like a, a panic attack because I'm like, I don't know why I put this scene this far down the list. And I had to refigure the entire list. I I was kind of traumatized and terrorized and, i just didn't know what to do <laughs> and it's my first time on your show and, and thank you and i just i don't want to disappoint your listeners i'm like oh I, I had to go with what my heart what what i when i what i have feelings <laughs> when i'm watching these three movies what i don't know it's it was diff, it was definitely difficult they yeah you know the jurassic world trilogy i i have my issues with the back half but there's some there's very good moments in all three of them that it's I it's really hard to choose the best one. It, it was, it was really hard, <clears throat> mm -hmm. like like incredibly hard. And I I, I set it up because I've I've already recorded the intro to the show and uh, I set it up in that and I was like I think this is the first time we've done like any kind of ranking or anything with like Jurassic World Dominion. And I was like, oh, like, I don't think we've, because we used to do like top fives and different kind of things like that a lot more. Yeah. But we haven't really done them in quite a while. And I, I was like, this, this, I think is the first time with Jurassic World Dominion. So I'm glad, Perfect. I'm glad, uh, you know, everything, everything's out there. We have so much to discuss and so much to get mm -hmm. into, but it makes narrowing it down to five kind of impossible. Like, it is. I, so I, I, <laughs> I wanted to give, a moment for at least each movie give one or two moments if i can i didn't want to leave any of them out either like it was hard it was definitely hard i there was a point where i was like is this movie even gonna make the list do i have yeah. too many from this movie I, it was so yeah. difficult so difficult yeah. um before we get into the list though i want to i want to ask you just like a simple question straight up though mm -hmm. uh because uh, this is a question that this is not the everybody's like oh he's gonna ask the question i'm not doing that uh uh <laughs> this is a different question because okay. um a lot of fans debate this and talk about this concept and and i feel mm -hmm. like you might be a, a good person to uh give me some info on this and what you think because so. a lot of people <laughs> wonder is jurassic park a horror movie what do you think okay. about that okay so i it's it, that movie is a mix of a lot and at the end of the day there are horror elements inside of jurassic park whether you want to admit it or not um for a great example is ellie sattler's scene in the control room when the velociraptor attacks her it's a straight up slasher movie at that yeah. point the velociraptor becomes a slasher and she becomes the final girl and she has to run away from it um and I know friends of mine that when they were little, they said the Jurassic Park scared them, which I don't see it because it didn't scare me. I became an obsessed fan after what I watched it. Um, and then I took a friend of mine back in high school when they did the 20 year release, the 3D release of Jurassic Park. Mm -hmm. She was screaming in the theater. She was scared. So I do believe Jurassic Park has is I don't want to say horror. It's its first genre, but it's definitely in there i love that so when, i love so when, I love that. yeah <laughs> so when people ask me i say yes it technically is because the dinosaurs become villains or at least the velociraptors become slashers while the t-rex i guess is the hero at the end of the day <laughs> um but it's still a monster movie and people are still getting murdered out there it's just it's an adventure at the same time yeah, a hundred percent. It's it's an adventure movie with mm -hmm. like horror elements and stuff like that. And that's kind of always the way I've described it. I, I've never been super firm on like it's definitely one only one genre or one thing. It's it's not. Mm -hmm. It's it's a lot of things. And I think I think it's it's an adventure movie with elements of horror throughout. It, it's not straight up a horror movie, but it's got a lot of those you know, things that the genre, like you were saying, has. So yeah. uh, I'm okay with kind of saying that it's 
part of a horror genre in a way, but like not totally. It's it's its own thing, I think. You yeah, know? I think the first half is very fantasy and science sci fi. And then mm -hmm. once once everything goes left and the park just shuts down, it becomes a horror movie because now they yeah. have to fight for their <laughs> lives from these creatures. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, just give me like a because uh, I don't honestly don't know too much about your history with the Jurassic franchise. Like, when did you first become a fan? Like, what, what's your <laughs> what's your rundown for this uh, franchise? Oh, Lord. So um, I will say I was born after Jurassic Park was released. I am a, I'm a bit <laughs> younger. Um, so The Lost World was the first Jurassic Park movie I ever saw. And I remember I had all the toys. I still have one toy from my childhood that I thank God I had still have it. Everything else I got lost while moving. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, the Lost World. I would I remember just watching it almost every single day at my mom's apartment, and I would run on the couches, pretend I was a Velociraptor. My favorite scene as a kid was the one Malcolm getting chased uh, when they were looking for Nick towards the end of the Lost World, and the Velociraptors attacked them. Mm -hmm. uh, so that was my favorite scene as a kid and then I remember that my dad came over to me he's like hey you know there's another movie right it's not just this one because I was burning <laughs> oh, the VHS man. of the lost world and I was like no I didn't know and then I guess he went to a friend's house and brought over Jurassic Park and saw that one and that one to me was even better um, amazing which is a little slower if you if you think about it but the, the scenes in Jurassic Park are just I don't know there's something about them that just it feels they feel better to me. Um, and ever since then, I just been an obsessed fan. I used to be the kid running around thinking he was a dinosaur chasing his friends. I, I just I love dinosaurs. I can't pronounce dinosaur names. So everyone forgive me today. I don't know half of the dinosaurs, but I enjoy watching the scenes. And then and I also remember when Jurassic Park three came out, I, I remember my mom getting me all the toys. Unfortunately, she didn't take me to theaters to see it. I don't know why. I don't know. She thought I was too young or something. But yeah, I've been a fan ever since I could remember, ever since I was a little kid, obsessed. Everything. I even have like our guest room is Jurassic Park themed. Amazing. So like when people stay over, I'm like, it's you're staying in the dinosaur room. So. <laughs> 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 Nothing wrong yeah. with that. That's that's no, perfect. No. Um, I love that, you you know, like you kind of which I feel like. I don't hear that story a lot that like the lost world was like the introduction. So I think that's really, really cool mm -hmm. because to me, that's just, it's neck and neck for my favorite one out of all of them. And it's yeah. just, it's incredible. It's so good. And then they go backwards to Jurassic park. That's, that's a cool vibe. I love that. Like mm -hmm. how did that, I, I yeah, that, that just would be really cool to kind of think about how that would work. I, I love that. So, and, and I love that. Like, I feel like while you were talking and thinking about the horror aspect of what you talk about on your show and stuff it, it, it i feel like we're we're aligned on a lot of these things and like i yeah. love horror i've got a, a few horror franchise things down below me all over the place nice so, um i yeah and 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 knowing your history with the film i feel like we're, we're gonna have an interesting list here um yeah and, <laughs> and jurassic world this is like we're not talking about the the previous ones obviously you just talked about jurassic no. park lost world but we're gonna, we're gonna talk about Jurassic World trilogy, and mm -hmm. um, I, uh, yeah, I don't really know like that every you know, and not everybody loves the Jurassic World trilogy, so it's like interesting. Yeah. But I want to talk about just the best things from it. So I think mm -hmm. maybe if maybe if you not, not you particularly, but like maybe if somebody out there doesn't love this movie or that movie, I feel like maybe you have to have like at least a favorite scene or you think that there's good scenes. So I'm mm -hmm. interested in, uh, in everybody's lists. I want to kind of see more like uh, of the lists out there and see what people think, but I'm interested in what you have to say. And what do you, th what do you say? We just get right into it because I, yeah, um, yeah. I, there's a lot of anticipation with this list and there's so much good I, stuff to talk <laughs> about. We're going to go all night. So, <laughs> yeah, I just want to say thank you for not including the first three movies. Cause that would have been, <laughs> It would have been yeah. mostly Jurassic Park, to be honest, but it would have been super difficult. <laughs> that, we, we need to have like a much longer, like top 15 or something like yeah. that. But top five is really difficult to narrow it down to. So mm -hmm. what do you say we kick it off with your fifth favorite scene uh, of the Jurassic <sighs> World trilogy? So I will say it's an introduction to a new dinosaur in the series. 
and I will have to go to the and forgive me for the mis the mispronunciation. No, you're not gonna go the, with the same scene that I have, <laughs> are you? Um, let's, the, let's say the the the, the theory <laughs> intro. Therizinosaurus. Thank you. Wait a second. <laughs> we both have the same five. Number five. Okay. Perfect. <laughs> so we can just talk about it now. What a that dinosaur is so cool. Like yeah. it, it's half carnivore too. Am I correct? Oh, I, I think, don't know. I think I see is. this is this I, is where we relate. That's what I was trying to say. Yeah. It's like I, I'm terrible with dinosaur names. I know most of these ones from the movies, but whenever ever I have to read like a new toy or something like that, yeah, I'm yeah. like, I don't know. So <laughs> I the uh, the the scene is okay, so I just want to start with saying like I love the forest around Claire, it feels very lost world to me when they get to that section of the movie. And mm -hmm. her she stands out because of her bright red hair around surrounding by all the greens and all in the forest. And then the dinosaur shows up and you're like, oh my God, it's gonna see her, but it's blind. And I didn't notice the first time it was blind on one eye or in both eyes. I don't know if it's both. And what I love that this dinosaur comes in very sassy and the first thing it does is slaps a deer <laughs> off the screen. And I'm like, <laughs> My favorite, my favorite. It it had no business to do that, but it did it. <laughs> yeah, the, the deer's getting no respect in this movie. I feel like so. No. The, just, that's that is one thing that stood out to me too. I'm like, man, like that just comes out of nowhere, just whoosh, with those huge claws, mm -hmm. and yeah. I, you know, I've got that same vibe because like you you talked about the the forest and everything. This forest is like. The way it's shot, like I, I love a lot of the sequences in Jurassic World Dominion. This is probably one of my favorite looking shots is like in mm -hmm. this forest and stuff. And it just the way that the lights like coming through the trees and the fog and it's just yeah. such a cool setting. Kind of kind of, I guess, like a you know, you mentioned it's like Lost World looking, but it's also swamp like. So that was really cool yeah. to see. So the setting was just incredible. Like it was so cool. And I and I love the intense of like, is he gonna see her? Is or is she gonna is she gonna get it? I mean, we know she's not gonna die. It's clear, <laughs> but I just, I love the how she goes underwater and it's smelling her. But and it, like I feel like she, it knows she's there, but it's like I'm just gonna leave you alone. But the the claws are so so frightening. I would hate to come across that dinosaur. Yeah, I would hate yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> what what I've always liked about um what these these three movies have done is give us like horror-esque vibes like throughout mm -hmm. like different sequences and this one with those claws it's it's basically like you know a freddy krueger or something like that just coming at yes. you with like you know these terrifying claws and just like mm -hmm. and but also one of the main things that stood out to me was the score i'm always like you know really keyed on you know what the scores sound like and for me it's and i'm not trying to like hone in on like your heart love for films and stuff like that but this but really though this is on my list because of the horror vibes of this sequence and because yeah. it's got like this john carpenter-esque score underneath with like these synths and just like just burr, mm -hmm. like these really cool sounds that make yeah. this a very like scary sequence like you said we know that claire's probably not going to get eaten here and we did see i think quite a bit of it in the trailer but um, mm -hmm. but it was just it was still such an awesome sequence with this yeah. brand new dinosaur, like you mentioned. It is mm -hmm. a horrifying creature because of the blindness, because of the it, it might. I forget if the, I forget if the um, pyraptor scene came before or after this, but we're, we're getting it's a, right. A, it's sequence. right after. Mm -hmm. OK, yeah. So the, the, we're yeah. getting like this attack sequence with like a. Uh, you know, a feathered dinosaur, and it's just something we've never seen, and it's so awesome. Like, it's just mm -hmm. the, one of the coolest sequences, and it's not super long or anything, but it's just, it's just a treat. Like the whole thing, it's so yeah. Good. And I and I love that this dinosaur can basically defend itself from the apex predators if it what you know if it was if it came down to it. So I think it's a cool dinosaur. I, I this is the first time it's not the first time I've seen it, but I was glad it was introduced at least now. So I hope we see more of it in the future, uh, maybe a chase scene or something with it, because that's one thing I did. What underwhelmed me about Dominion was that some dinosaurs got introduced, but they were just like it felt like just little quick segments and then we never see them again. Yeah. 
Um, yeah, that's fair. I know I was thinking about mm-hmm. Dominion the other day and like what are things that people potentially don't like. And I know like a lot of the sequences kind of come by really fast and we get, you know, small moments with the Pyroraptor, with the Therizinosaurus, mm-hmm. with, you know, whatever else. But um, but but the way it's it, it impacted me at least and that that dinosaur, I, I think it might have been like the first time I ever saw that thing. And I was like, I didn't know. I've never heard of this thing. I was like, <laughs> just a, like, how is this thing real? Like, it's, it's yeah. crazy with that long <laughs> neck and just the I, the way it looks. It was just uh, the visually, I think they did an amazing job bringing that thing to mm-hmm. life. As far as I yeah. can tell, I, I typically don't care about like the realism according to what the real dinosaurs look like or whatever. So that doesn't bother me. I don't know if it's real or not. I have no idea, but like, I mean, I know it's a real dinosaur, whether it looked real or not, but, um, so so it it just looked awesome. Yeah. I will say that's one of my pet peeves. It's like, it doesn't look like it's original look. And I'm like, guys, it's a movie. First off, it's also (laughs) a, a a cloned dinosaur. So any, they could have done anything to it and it has DNA from other animals. So of course it's going to look different. Yeah. It, like uh, Henry Wu says something in the first movie. It's like, you didn't ask for realism. You asked for more teeth or more yep. bigger or whatever. And it's like, yeah, yeah. guys, come on. It's, have fun. It's a movie. <laughs> but yeah, I can't believe out of all of the sequences, both of us had that at number five. And that was one that <laughs> like really flip flopped a bunch of times for me. So uh, okay, aw- that's awesome. Do you have anything else to say about that scene before we move on? Uh-huh. Or? No, I think I think we're good now. I think we're we nailed good. it. All right, we yeah, nailed it. yeah. So, why don't we just skip to number four then? What's your uh, what's your fourth one? Okay, so my fourth one was actually originally my two, but now it became four. Like I said, this was hard. <laughs> so, my number four now is I called it goodbye to Nublar, and it has to be the Brachiosaurus oh, trying to run for the man. boat. I I watched I watched uh, Falling Kingdom this morning and. I did not think I was going to cry and I was just sitting there crying. Like, why would they do this to us? And then I believe the director had confirmed that it's the original Bracky from the first movie. And that just yeah that broke my heart even more. Like, why would you do this to us? It is so sad. It is so sad. I never thought I was going to cry for a CGI dinosaur. And I here I was like, ah, the way the way it's just engulfed in the smoke. And then it just gets on his hind legs and and like roars one last time is just so sad like it's it's one of those like yeah traumatizing sequences it's like mm-hmm. first off it, you're kind of feeling the stress of like oh they're killing off not only this dinosaur that's in front of me but this island that i know and love from these all these movies and like yeah. i've been waiting to go back to this island we got we got a bit of it in jurassic world but then it just mm-hmm. gets obliterated in this movie um Mm -hmm. so we assume and and like like the sadness of that and then you pile on that this brachiosaur is there and then to learn i think i think it was like confirmed like you said like on like twitter or some article or something that he said it was the original one which in my head canon not true i i don't buy that i don't take that i don't consideration (laughs) (laughs) yeah i don't like to think about it either but it's such a sad moment if it is Mm. if you know if if it is because it's like It's the first dinosaur we are introduced to, which not only that scene in the first movie makes me cry because it's the first dinosaur they see. Yeah. And Hammond's here saying, welcome to Jurassic Park always gets me. To then also end the island on this dinosaur dying. It's like, oh, it's just, it tears my heart apart. Yeah. And there's that like whole smoky, fiery look to that sequence when it, it kind of mm-hmm. hops up. I think it hops up like on the back legs, just like the same yeah iconic look that the brachiosaurus gave us in the first film and it's just mm-hmm. like oh it's brutal and it hurts and yeah everybody likes to tease me about that scene because the brachiosaurus is just one of my favorite dinosaurs of all time oh, um yeah. and it just it hurts that is a that is a tough sequence to go through and mm-hmm. uh, i wish it never happened yeah i just I, I don't want that island to die or that dinosaur or anything <laughs> You know, I didn't either. And then as I, I was sitting there today, I was like, you know, now that I'm watch, rewatching this movie and then I know what Dominion came and Chaos Theory now is, it's a good, good, it's a good send off to now, I guess, get like now we need now there's a reason we don't need to go back and why the dinosaurs are on the mainland. Um, I guess but <laughs> yeah. it's, just so, it's just so sad. It's so sad. <laughs> 
Yeah, I I know. I uh I I I don't know why. All the dinosaurs were swimming though in the previous sequence. Just yeah, jump in the water, so- Brachiosaur. Please swim. You've got a long mm-hmm. neck. You can go up and above the water. I think you should be fine. So yeah, <laughs> just, just make it to it Sorna. In the water. You can. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I, for one, I I still talk about it all the time that I don't think that island is dead, and I think you know there's probably a I lot of it so. destroyed. I think it will come back. I would love to see it come back in some way in the future, mm-hmm. but. But yeah, that is a good pick for number four. I, I like Thank that. You. Plus the score. Again, the score in that sequence is great. So Yep. That adds that to hits the drama. Mm-hmm. 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 <clears throat> so for my number four, um, this was one that I think popped up in my head, like probably one of the first ones that popped into my head. And it definitely shifted a few times. Um, but this one is going to be the Atrociraptor sequence from Jurassic World Dominion. So I'm, <gasps> I'm hitting two in a row with Dominion here. Okay. Um, okay. I love this sequence a lot. I just think that like the frenetic energy of it is just so fun and, and so exciting for me. Like mm-hmm. I, 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 first off, I feel like I was there for these Atrociraptors before everybody watched Chaos Theory and, and decided <laughs> that they were cool all of a sudden. Uh, so, like, I loved them back in Jurassic World Dominion, and mm-hmm. I, I loved how they were used in there. I know, like, the the laser sight and all that's a little, you know, hokey, but, like, the way it was utilized more so in, in Chaos Theory is a bit cooler with the whistles. But, yeah. like, still, though, I love the Atrociraptors here in Malta, and you get mm-hmm. them just barreling through like the, the the streets and alleyways and houses and stuff like that. And I think that's probably one of the best parts is the way that Malta was used in this sequence. It was just mm-hmm. they really like showcased that that island you know uh, place so well because you get to see like the incredible old city stuff, and you get to see you know the. Like basically, like like I said, the 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 upper level where you get on top of the roofs, you get inside mm-hmm. houses, and yeah. like underneath the city, you've got also like a, a runway on the outskirts of the city. So there's a lot of usage of Malta, which I thought was really cool, um, and I love how like it kind of goes back and forth between like what Owen and Barry are doing and what mm-hmm. um, Kayla and Claire are doing, and I just thought that was fun, just following these different characters throughout this like intense sequence there's a um it's just a cool energy about it you get to see claire just you know fighting and and tasing raptors and all kinds of cool stuff and barry's barely escaping you know shooting his gun at these things and just trying to get out it's like it's it's a lot of energy in this sequence and i think most of it is due to like the score too the score is so incredible it's got mm-hmm. that track, uh, "De Plane and De Cycle," one of the dumbest names I've ever heard for a song, but it's it's so much fun <laughs> and it's just so intense. And the way that it all culminates in, like them, him, like Owen racing down to the the runway and like catching mm-hmm. up with the plane. I, I just I loved mm-hmm. how fun that sequence is. He slams the car, the not the car, the the motorcycle into the plane and the I think it was. Uh, uh, it's ghost, like ghost. It. yeah ghost yeah. that just like falls off into the water and i'm like this like my hype level is at an all-time high at that moment when yeah the music peaks right there and and it gets kind of i think you get like the jurassic world theme right at like a nice like loving kind of moment right there and while mm-hmm. ghost is floating away into the ocean and i'm like <laughs> man that is just such an awesome sequence from start to finish and it's yeah. long too so it's like i kind of like there's a lot of stuff going in there. So I, I kind of calculated from like when these things are introduced all the way to that like flight sequence. So it's it's one of my favorite moments of of all of these movies, I think. Yeah, I that's probably my favorite moment in that whole entire movie. <laughs> it's it is it is real it is I'm a sucker for a good chase scene. I am a sucker for a good chase scene. And just that they added raptors to it, it's even better. Like it, the, the whole scene is just amazing. And one thing that stuck out with me in this scene is that they do cut the score off and it's just the motorcycle and the foot and the the stepping of the atrociraptors yeah. at one point. There's no score and that that to me is chef's kiss. It, it reminds me a lot of the T-Rex escaping in the first movie. It's just rain and the T-Rex. There's no music. It's very tense. And 
I, I love it. I love the whole scene. The, the the way the cinematography moves, the camera moves with Claire's getting chased is amazing. It's it's so good. It's Chef's Kiss. It's <laughs> so it's what I it's what I wanted. And I don't know though, Claire getting chased through the roof. It kind of reminds me of the book. Ellie getting chased in the roof at the visitor center. It's very I don't know. It's just it's just beautiful. It's a beautiful scene. It's amazing. <laughs> It's it so is on my fun. list. I just don't want to. <laughs> don't spoil it. Uh, don't spoil it yeah. yeah. Um, and you mentioned like the the score dropping out there. I think that's always one of my favorite moments is when like mm -hmm. you just get to hear the sounds of what's happening. So, yeah, yeah. definitely a good shout out for that. Uh, all right, so we are on number three already. So, what is your number third three. sequence uh, from the Jurassic World trilogy? So I'm going to give another shout out to Fallen Kingdom and my third will be the opening to Fallen Kingdom with the T-Rex. Um, All right. I, Fallen Kingdom is when you when you talk about horror, I think Fallen Kingdom is the, has the most horror out of the six movies. Um, and I think the scene is just it's just spectacular. The way the guy setting up everything, we don't know what's going on. <laughs> and they tease you. They tease you with a Dilophosaurus and you're like, oh, are we going to see one? Uh, cause you hear one <laughs> in the bushes and it's like, oh my God, we're going to get one. And then you just hear the thunder and the guy screaming on the helicopter and the T-Rex is just like in and out of the lightning. And it's just so freaking scary. And then it just, it, it chases the guy down the park and it's, it's awesome. It's so awesome. And then, you know, the helicopter's trying to escape and the T-Rex almost it hits the water and you're like, we know what's in the water. So it's like, what's <laughs> happening? It's that that whole sequence is so tense and it's so it's such a great opening to a, a Jurassic movie. It has to be one of the best openings in the series, like hands down. No matter what you feel about the movie, that opening is amazing. Yeah, mm -hmm. you know it's really it's really hard to uh, top. I think the first movie, you know, in terms of like yeah. opening sequences. That opening sequence in Jurassic Park is just iconic with the Velociraptor and and the shooter. Mm -hmm. like, it's just it's so good, but like this is is a close second probably to that. It's it is For so sure. so good. I I'm not gonna talk too much about it. It might be on my list, but <laughs> it is uh it is an iconic sequence nonetheless. Mm -hmm. I think it is it mm -hmm. is truly awesome. Yeah. Um, Yes. Anything else? Since I I won't say much about it right now. Um. No. No. I think right. this was the. I think this scene was just needed. I I love a good running from Rexy scene. Uh, so. <laughs> I'm glad. I'm glad, yeah. I'm glad we got that opening. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It sets. I feel like it sets the tone very well after Jurassic World and like just gave people what they wanted. Right. Like it was yeah. just. Mm -hmm. It was there for us. It was there for us. Mm -hmm. Uh, all right, so my uh, number three, this one was one that I almost didn't include on the list. I at first I like had my list written out, and I'm like, I was like, where can I put this? I I don't know if I was feeling like like eh, it's old news at this point or whatever, but like I, so I rewatched it. I tried to do that for all these sequences. I think you said you rewatched these three movies, yeah. but like I, I just rewatched like a few sequences just cause I was like, all right, let me see. And this is one that when I rewatched, I was like, Oh, Oh man, this has got to go on the list. This is the, <laughs> uh, the final battle sequence from Jurassic world, uh, with the Indominus oh, Rex no. and T-Rex and everything. Okay. So, okay. <clears throat> Yeah, like I, I said, at first I was like, <laughs> <laughs> it's hard when there's like, you know, there's like some yeah. really top good sequences. They're they're gonna end up on the list. Um, yeah. So for me, for me, this was like, it was just so cool seeing like the Raptors stand off against the Indominus right there. I thought that was really cool. Um, mm -hmm. You know, you get one that's like, I think blue is thrown. Another one's just like cooked on the. Uh, the stove and like another yeah. one's chomped like i never know which one's getting cooked or chomped or blown up or you whatever. know but uh are you i'm sorry am i though it i can i i can watch that movie to this day and i still don't know what raptor is which only blue <laughs> and people, people no. are like i can tell them i was like i cannot tell them apart I feel like I used to have a have a better sense of like the color patterns and stuff like that but even even at the height of me knowing which raptor was maybe which, 
I still don't know throughout most of that movie. So I th- I feel like yeah. it's okay. It's okay. Okay. Uh, <laughs> but like you get you get a really cool sequence with like the Indominus Claw in that like merch stall, and I feel like that's mm-hmm. where the scene kind of kicks into gear for me because the the score does a lot of different stuff during this sequence, and it and it changes. It goes all over the place and has some really like boom 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 like impactful stuff but then it gets like tense and like building drama with like the you know the drums and the percussion and stuff and then some really like heroic moments as well but like the the intensity kind of builds from that like merch stall sequence to you know uh, unleashing paddock the dinosaur and paddock nine and getting rexy's like glowing eyes and stuff there's just so much drama to it um i love that like Claire insults Lowry and just is like, you know, yes. be a man and do something for once. Like I just, uh, <laughs> he, I love that that joke. It's just really stupid and funny. But, uh, and I, I just like this when I was rewatching it just you know earlier, I was like thinking about my first time watching this in the theaters in 2015, and just like mm-hmm. how how much I was in shambles at this moment, you know, in the film when the Rex comes out and. You know, I'm thinking, wow, okay, this Rex is, I forget, like 30 something years old or whatever. And I'm like, ah, oh, man, like this is, you know, I don't know if she's going to make it out of this. She's old. She's frail, probably. She's not going to. And like to see her just like go limp basically on the ground, I I was like panicking in the theater. And I'm like, no, 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 don't do this to me. Don't do this. This is, this is my Rex. You know, this, we need to see yeah, her yeah. live. And, you know, finally getting her like, you know, saved with the the lost world theme comes in and blues there and i'm mm. i'm like i'm also in like distress because i'm like why is the lost world theme playing like what is happening <laughs> um but like it's just such a cool sequence seeing blue like hop on the backs of different dinosaurs and uh and that final like roar they're all roaring at each other which is just so yeah. cool and then the Mosasaur just comes and takes it away. Like, it's just such an awesome sequence. And I I honestly almost left it off the list because I was just like, ah, it's old news to me at this point. Like, it's just, mm-hmm. you know, I've yeah, it's so so almost 10 years old at this point. Um, yeah, but yeah. I was like, man, it, it really deserves it. It deserves it. So, mm-hmm. yeah, uh, such it, a good sequence. It's amazing. It's an amazing. I don't want to talk too much about it because it is okay, amazing. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, just, so yeah, that... That was my number three. You did your number three. We are in the top two already. Uh, what yeah. is your What is your number two for the the trilogy? So it's crazy because my number two would have been my number four originally. And we would have matched our number fours again. So oh. it's the Malta chasing. Yeah, I had to. Yes. Put, I I put it up because after watching it today, I was like, "Wow, this is really good. This, I mean, <laughs> this is really amazing." And not the fact that it's just the Achopsoraptors chasing them. There's also like the Allosaurus and the Carn and the Carnotaurs are out yeah. somewhere doing dinosaur things, and then it's it's just a good like I said before, like the no music and just the motorcycle in the footsteps of the Achopsoraptors and Claire in the car and she's trying to fight one off and it's just so good. And then when the music finally kicks in, we're going through the city and people are dying from the other two big dinosaurs. It's a it's a it's a great sequence in that movie. Great sequence. Yeah, it it's also like it's a bit funny too. Like you you call out the uh um uh what are they? The uh Allosaurus and the Carnotaurus like just mm-hmm. being out there. They take out that dude that's like I think he won a contest <laughs> and he ended up in the movie and then he gets taken out on a scooter. It's just kind of yeah. silly. And and it reminded me also of um the sequence with Barry and Owen where he's like do the the role thing that you know we used to do on yeah. the island and I'm like I love that it kind of harkened back to Jurassic World and what they used to do together and mm-hmm. that was kind of cool and it also was funny like seeing him like do I do it should I do it now like when when do I go yeah. like now and it, it's just like a it's a comical sequence that you know it, I love that like they're able to make this a very intense sequence but also give it a bit of comedy too i think that's pretty cool mm-hmm. so and and it's it's a lot it's a huge sequence yeah i just my one question is where does the fourth atrociraptor come from because there's not one in <laughs> chaos theory and i was like aren't there four 
Look, so, I feel like th- I feel like there's a lot of story to tell, right? We've got mm-hmm. this this handler in chaos theory who is not the same person Soyona Santos from the film. So it's like yeah. what what when does the exchange happen? Where's this other Atrocer after come from. I feel like there's mm-hmm. some really cool stories to tell before we even get to this moment in this film. And yeah, uh, and and rewatching it again, like I think it was the first thing I did after finishing Chaos Theory. So like I I finished Chaos Theory and I was like I got to go watch that one sequence. So I put that sequence on. I was like, man, oh, okay, that was so mm-hmm. good. Like such a cool sequence to watch. So mm-hmm. uh, and it's it, it's really cool to see like them building out the history of these dinosaurs and and yeah. i can't wait to see like if this this world of malta is you know built out even more so that's going to be a blast i to hope find so out. Mm-hmm. yeah i hope so because i had questions when i first started why well, i didn't know where it was taking place it was before or after the movie because i saw three i was like oh they didn't want to fall in the water so maybe it died but it's not, <laughs> not that, it's not yeah. that one it's not that one so i was like okay so there's a fourth one later on i'm guessing that comes in from somewhere from someone so yeah Yeah. well we have to wait and see i guess and apparently Mm -hmm. season two is not too far away so that's gonna be fun i can't wait yeah i can't wait uh (laughs) any more about your number two you want to mention before we uh before i give mine um no i think i'm good i think i'm good. all right so my number two is one of yours was it number three or so the uh the intro to fallen kingdom Oh, that was my three. Yeah. Our, our, yeah. our lists are pretty similar. Yeah. And I'm interested <laughs> yeah. to see where, where our number one goes, but, um, yeah. but this one for me, yeah, it just like, it, it sets the vibe. I think of this movie, you had mentioned that it's like maybe the most horror esque movie out of all of them. And I feel like it starts here, right? It's, it gives us like mm-hmm. super ominous vibes. Um, and it, it kind of, like the way that that the lost world opens too like that it also gives us like that eerie feel throughout the beginning of that mm-hmm. movie and this one does the same um in a very different manner of course but like i i love seeing like the that water gate thing open up and like you mm-hmm. get to see like the destruction and overgrowth yeah. and and we're you know i mentioned it when you gave it on your list i, I was like this gives us kind of what we wanted uh, mm-hmm. after watching Jurassic World, we like we wanted some Jurassic Park vibes back, right? Like we wanted mm-hmm. to see l- like rain. We got like a rainstorm. We got a, a yep. big storm going on that harkens mm-hmm. back. And we also got like the yellow raincoat dude like there. Yeah. I'm like, okay, <laughs> we got the re- yellow raincoat in the movie. You mentioned a Dilophosaur. I'm like, yeah, you know, depending on what kind of theater you saw it in, some people heard it, some people didn't. And even me, like I was like listening to the sequence. I was like, I didn't even hear it. And then I had to go back it's and like raise the volume. And I'm like, hey, there it is. There it is. Okay. Um, it's such a weird thing to include in that movie, but I'm like, I'm here for it. Whatever, whatever the reasoning was. Um, and we do get like, speaking of scores, I love to call that out. We got like a very jaws like score moment where it's like, ba-dum, ba-dum. and then like, that's, you know, basically after that, we get a, a much more intense score. Um, and I love that that was that part of the score was like, I think that was the one that um, Giacchino teased like before the movie came out. He like showcased like the studio and them film uh, them recording like uh, part of the score. And I was like, oh my god, like it sounds like Jaws. It's got to be like a water mosasaur sequence. And uh, mm-hmm. it was just such a cool use of the score throughout that moment. But seeing the Rex again pop out of the woods. Uh, was awesome you know like at the end of the jurassic world we get her roaring over her kingdom and yeah you know now she's just like hey there's somebody on my island get out of here like <laughs> i'm gonna eat you <laughs> uh just throws a truck out of the way like just chasing that it's, dude mm-hmm. he like i love that like you know he gets away you know, fair and square like he's fine but like there's this drama intention of like, will they, won't they cut the ladder? Like, I, I love that. Like, they're like debating that in the helicopter, like cut it. Mm-hmm. It, it was just too yeah. cool. And then it eventually it doesn't matter. And it, he just gets destroyed by the Mosasaur. <laughs> and yeah. it's so good because like after that moment, you, you get that tension and then you, you pan to the, uh, the Indominus bone is in there in the helicopter. And like, mm-hmm. you know, they got what they came for. And then we get like, the incredible uh uh fallen kingdom theme just like just 
blaring out at the top of its lungs and and you get to see the the lava flow logo before the yeah. movie settles into the rest of it and it's just like ah oh, it's such an iconic sequence i love mm-hmm. it so much and it's just because it, it makes us feel like jurassic park again and it's so good mm-hmm. it's so good uh, yeah I, I remember when that title card got or the title for this movie got announced i was in love with it i was like this is an amazing title for the movie i know we're going back to the island if it's called fallen kingdom um (laughs) i i think it would have been funny if they named it the lost park jurassic world that would have been really (laughs) funny (laughs) yeah i know one of these days they'll actually like do that restructuring of the title i i I was actually talking about it the other day i think on the live stream i'm like they should Mm -hmm. do that now like they should give us like Mm -hmm. uh, like uh some sort of t- subtitle then Jurassic World just to switch it up a little bit you know I would like yeah. that um but yeah so it, it's I love that the idea of like the destruction and and all that I wish we got to see more of it in that movie cuz like mm-hmm. you know there's certainly a, a you know a good amount of that movie where you could say like they should have just left it an island movie or they should have made it a horror you know monster movie in a castle or whatever but like you can I, it's I like it with both, but like yeah. I also would have liked to have seen more of the destruction of the island and stuff like that too. So yeah, Fall, um, Falling Kingdom is very split for me. It's a movie that I have very very split feelings about because uh, I do love the island stuff a lot, and I and I I will say I'm a fan of the San Diego scene in The Lost World. So when mm-hmm. they were saying talking about bringing the dinosaurs to the mainland, I'm like yes more people to die um (laughs) so you know when they get to the mansion my one gripe is that i feel like we should have not stayed at the mansion for too long or the whole Mm -hmm. the entirety of the rest of the movie because claire does mention there's a town over so i thought oh maybe they're hinting that they're gonna escape and then maybe this town is gonna get wrecked by all these dinosaurs but (laughs) that's my one gripe is the inner the inner raptor gets out but it decides to stay in the mansion and not leave you know, but we, it is we what had to it wait is. Six years. We had to wait six years for content showcasing what happened after that sequence. You know, like it took yeah. us still chaos theory to actually get, oh, what happened in the towns over in the towns nearby? Mm-hmm. Like we really didn't get that. I mean, I guess we did get a little bit in uh Battle at Big Rock and stuff, but like it really yeah. this is this is kind of this the chaos theory is kind of the sequel that people were expecting to this movie. So mm-hmm. um I can see what you mean there, but like I love I love both aspects of that film and the horror, you know, the uh, yeah, yeah, uh, Dracula's castle, of Fran- you know, something like that. It <laughs> kind of feels like, you know, something creepy like that. So I, I love that. But um, yeah. but yeah, that oh, anyway, the intro is my number two. So let's let's uh, kick it back to number one. What is your uh, last official uh, ranking here with number one? So my number one is we need more teeth. Uh, the the end oh, battle. Oh, I forgot. The world. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, you're fine. So I just that final scene. I re, I went to see Jurassic World in theaters twice. It's the only one out of the three I went to see in theaters twice. I was like <laughs> that that final. Not not only the Velociraptors fighting the Indominus, the the way the T Rex gets intro, reintroduced again, and we get to see her because they like they don't show us the T Rex throughout the whole movie. You know, we get a little snippet of her eating earlier in the movie, but we don't really see her. Mm-hmm. And then as she's coming out of the out of the paddock, and the music starts, and she's just coming out of the shadows. I think I teared up in theaters. Like, wow, this is the <laughs> same T Rex from the first movie. And as she comes out, she does her iconic roar. The music cuts and she does her roar and she's just chasing Claire. Claire is still in her heels. Good for her. And she then she breaks through a Spinosaurus skeleton, kind of saying an F you to the third movie. <laughs> and it's just like, <laughs> it's just perfect. It's a perfect introdu- reintroduction to her. And that fight is just chef's kiss. I, I usually pay attention more to Blue because Blue's getting kind of thrown around and it's kind of funny. Yeah. Uh, She's like a little I, I like to think of it of my two dogs and my cat, all three of them playing because that's what it looks <laughs> like. Uh, but it's it's just amazing. It's a really great fight scene. It's what we needed. It's it's a great in- reintroduction to the series. I love that we also got the a, an opened park and we got to see what that would have been like if, you know, Jurassic Park would have been made. And 
so it's a great sequel and a great ending to the to the a, 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 re, uh, a remake i guess of the original movie a reboot of the series mm-hmm. yeah i agree it is like a good ending and it, it's like you know there's certainly a lot of drama surrounding like do we need more dinosaur battles and all this stuff and mm-hmm. i'm like i like yes. it like i don't care like i love uh, yeah i love it i love seeing these things come together and i know like that's what the first movie was. It was, you know, mm-hmm. it, at the end of it, it wasn't like, I know, I know there's like kind of a different vibe when it comes to like the battle itself with like the heroics and all that. But that's what the T-Rex was in the first movie. It did mm-hmm. end up being the hero, even though it, you know, it's still a villain in that movie, but it's, it's still like, you know, went through some heroics there and killed off the Raptors. Yeah. And, um, and you know, the same thing happens here. Yes. It's like, it's seemingly more friendly because it's like Claire's there. It's not, they're not eating the people. It's like, you know, Mm -hmm. I, and, and you have blue there, but like, I love that. I don't know. I personally love the connection to the humans with these dinosaurs after 30 years or however, however long it was to that point. Like that's a lot of time, you know, to get comfortable with the human aspect for the dinosaurs. You know, you have to, I, that's what I think about. I think about these dumb things, but like, you know, like, no, you're I fine. feel like the humans <laughs> and dinosaur relationship is different at that point, you know? Yeah. You know, it's funny because like, I think that when uh, the T-Rex, you know, the fight ends, the T-Rex looks at blue and is like, thank you. you I was going to die. <laughs> um, so yeah. you came out and, and it's, and it's also that the, I, I can't think of the word, but, you know, in the first movie, she's killing the Velociraptors, and now the Velociraptor and the T Rex have to team up to kill something that was made out of their DNA. So it's it's yeah. I I guess I'll call it it's beautiful. Um, <laughs> yeah. It, and I and I like the relationship that when I first saw the trailer for Jurassic World, I remember seeing Owen in the motorcycle with the Velociraptors, and I got so giddy because I was like, my child, <laughs> me as a kid yes that's what we wanted we wanted to team up yep. with the boss raptors um and i i have a pet reptile like i have a snake and i get it it's it's a relationship that you have to build with trust and now they're not gonna you know they're not gonna <laughs> like you um yeah I, I i like the whole having a pet dinosaur situation they got like bumpy and and um forgot his name and ben and ben, chaos yeah. dude like it's 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 cute i like it it's it should be more normal <laughs> yeah oh totally i agree what do you what are your thoughts on because like i i feel a certain way towards the the ending there when the indominus gets pulled under how did you what did that make you feel like at that moment i Actually, I I liked it, but I felt like it should have been more the these the other two killing it off. Okay. Um, I know there were there were theories of oh, it didn't die because of some one of the one of the uh, one of the animals in its DNA was had uh, was supposed to be venomous, so the people were saying that the mosasaurus yeah. was gonna die from biting the skin of it because it was of the poison. Oh, yeah, and yeah, that would have been more interesting if. But then it's like. It it's it's okay. I I like I, I think it's very it's very um uh oh, it's it's uh I can't think of the word, but the Mosasaurus coming out of the water and just grabbing it is it's kind of cool. It's it's, it's like it we, is it's brutal it's, though. Like I, it's there. I yeah, it kind of was lurking. It surprised me when it happened, and I was I felt bad mm-hmm. honestly. Like at the end, once it actually happens and the Mosasaurus pulls it down, I felt sad. I was like, oh. It's, you know, it, you know, it, it was just trying to survive. It was just doing what it knew. And like, yeah. and it just got ripped yeah. and killed and, and brought into the ocean or the you know the lagoon. And I'm like, oh man, now I feel bad. But like, I also yeah, didn't want I, the other ones to die. So you have exactly. to have it, I guess. <laughs> you have to pick one big bad. Yeah. And you do feel kind of bad because it's like, they really beat it up and it's like it's like they said they killed this it didn't have a mother it didn't know what it was doing it was just trying to see where it fit in the food chain so it was just a wild animal that was just trying to see what it where to fit and the mosasaurus took (laughs) all right so uh, i'll go into my number one then and it's gonna it's gonna cause an uproar i feel like uh random i don't know i i even i'm like (laughs) kind of taken aback i'm like this is this is what i went with them because i'm like i 
I rewatched and rewatched. I actually watched it a few times just to make sure. And I'm like, yeah, I love this <laughs> sequence. I love this one a lot. Um, and this is from Jurassic World Dominion. I got okay. a lot of Dominion on my list, guys. Like, it's yeah. <laughs> there's a lot. Um, and it's actually the final battle from that movie. <laughs> okay. So I like these battles. What can I say? Like, I like seeing these dinosaurs all come together and fight one way or another. Like, I just, ah, oh, man. And, yeah, I know this one's going to be controversial, like a controversial pick. But, like, I just, I love this moment so much. I you know, I mentioned the the lighting and stuff and, like, the way that this mm -hmm. movie shot, like, earlier with the Therizinosaurus sequence. Um, this sequence is one of those moments that, like, really stands out to me. I'm like, oh, man, it just looks so good. It, it, mm -hmm. I, I don't know. The way that the dinosaurs are brought to life, they look so realistic. Um, you could say, like, moments from Jurassic World or, or Fallen Kingdom have moments where you're like, ah, they just don't look very good. But like this final battle, I'm like, oh my god! Like they look so incredible, the dinosaurs. But layer that on top of like these cool dinosaurs with backdrop. Oh, my voice! I almost lost it. Backdrops <laughs> with like with like fire in the mountains and just raining down like uh, you know like little embers and stuff are coming down all mm -hmm. around them. But it's also like raining and storming, and you've got like the spotlight from the helicopter thing. It's just like. Yeah flashing all it's super around epic. it's mm -hmm. just there's so much it just looks incredible and, and i love seeing like rexy just waltz into this you know final showdown recreating that the logo it's just like i know like some people might call it stupid but like i just love i just love that moment like seeing no. rexy just you know with the logo like it just it's just too cool it's too cool um and yeah, I just, I don't know. I love the way the camera is used, the way it's like, it, it is ground level with the humans for a mm -hmm. lot of it. But then it also does, it changes perspective. You get a lot of shots from like some shots like inside the helicopter and you get reflections on the glass and you get, yeah. you know, it just like, again, with the cool lighting, but then you also get the camera li uh, rising up a lot and it, it does give like the higher perspective. Um, mm -hmm. So I think it gives us a lot in terms of like how it's shot and stuff and, and the scale, you know, it goes small scale, but then it goes big. Um, and mm -hmm. I just, I don't know. I just like seeing the, uh, the Giga out there fighting. It's just like, it's a really cool looking dinosaur. And I just, yeah, I don't know. I just love seeing that. And then the, the Therizinosaurus is back and just casually mm -hmm. just like eating something off to the side. But then it's like, hey, I guess I'm going to join in this fight. And, um, <laughs> you know, again, also like the Jurassic World battle, it gives us that moment again with the Rex going mm -hmm. down. And uh, yeah, I know it's like a, it's a lot of the same stuff. You know, the, the Rex goes down. Is it out? Is it dead? Is it going to, you know? die in this moment but no it comes I back say. <laughs> it's it's i love that i i don't know i love no. the drama of that no i i will say is when the t-rex went down in this movie i believed it more than the first one <laughs> so i was like am i about to walk out of this theater because i don't want to see her die that's one thing <laughs> just let her live let her have her happy ending leave her alone but no i i this this scene is very good i remember watching it today the way the way the, way the t-rex is introduced into this scene it's chef's kiss. I love the whole the fountain with the circle. It, she makes the logo. It's amazing. I don't care what anyone says. That's one of that's freaking awesome. It's awesome. <laughs> I'm glad. I'm glad that it, it, that if if we were to end here, okay, fine. It's awesome. Um, yeah, and yeah, and I love that the, the Thino is just minding its business, eating, and then the Giga's like, "Hey, I just killed this one, so I guess you're next." And it's like, bro, leave me alone. <laughs> It even it even loses a claw like in this scene like it takes a claw off of it um yeah it's really good and i and i do like that they work together the t-rex just pushes it and just kills it and then the one thing that i i know you're big on scores but like the the i wish the score would have been lower so we hear more of the roar over with the with the storm uh -huh. um that's one thing that i that these movies started doing that they started good like the roar the score over the roar and i never was a fan of that i like the roar and no score like feel the rumble <laughs> the roar um 
I, I feel like that needs like a, a shirt, like hashtag roar no score or something like that. That would yeah. be cool. Yeah, you should sell that. I, I don't know. I always <laughs> think of the first movie, the T-Rex does his final roar, and that's what you really hear, the rumbling of her roar. And it's it's always been one of my favorite things in these movies. Um, but mm-hmm. I do love the shot of the Athena and the T-Rex roaring together and the lightning hitting and then there's freaking blazes oh, in the back. It, it's, it's a beautiful oh, shot. It's a beautiful, beautiful shot. Um, it really is. But, that, mm-hmm. go ahead. No, I was just, and then I'm just glad that she gets her happy ending with two other T Rexes joining her her crew. Aww. Yeah, and I do like I that. Hope, I hope we never revisit that Rex. I don't. I feel bad saying that because I got that is my favorite Rex from all these movies. Like I love it mm-hmm. so much. But like, like you said, it gets a happy ending. It gets to like live out its life. There, throughout each of these movies. You know, before them, I was theorizing and doing speculation episodes like, is this the movie where the Rex is going to die? Oh, is this the movie? No, this has got to be the movie, right? Like, I did it three times. I'm like, it's definitely dying in Dominion. Like, that's going to, that's how the movie starts. It's going to, you know, I was hoping but <laughs> it didn't. I mean, like, it, it still didn't happen, but we got that happy ending. And mm-hmm. uh, I kind of just would like them to like leave it be. We don't have to revisit Rexy again. We don't have to do. Th- we can have another T Rex. That's fine. Um, like Chaos mm-hmm. Theory gives us. So I, I think that's yeah. pretty cool. You know, it gives us something else. Um, but yeah, you mentioned that that um, that like final roar sequence, which I agree with you totally about the the roars uh, in the Jurassic World trilogy. Mm-hmm. They're they're just different. They're different. Like the, yeah. the, it's not as powerful of a a Rex roar. He, throughout mm-hmm. the, the three roars, the end of Jurassic World, it's a different sounding roar, um, yeah. and the end, uh, no, the middle of Jurassic World, Fallen Kingdom, where it roars with the volcano behind it, mm-hmm. that should be a much more powerful roar than it is. And then this mm-hmm. one again, like it's a mix of both of those species, and it sounds it's not a super intense roar. Um, so yeah, I totally get what you're saying there, but. I just can't. I like. I want artwork of that of that final shot. Like, I need like yeah. to see that lightning bolt with the mountains on fire and the there's Enosaurus and and the Rex there. It's just like um, it's just amazing. It's just incredible. Mm-hmm. So I love that. Also, shout out to the extended edition for showcasing that um that flash of lightning where it flashes back to the prologue. Where oh, is that the is that the extended? It's in the extended cut. While oh, the Rex okay. was... is dead and downed, it's like you it's zooming in on the eye. And then it yeah, flashes yeah, yeah. to like to 65 million years ago and you see the Rex mm-hmm. like lying there with the the trees yeah. that are replicated. Like the trees that they they're not even trees in the Biosyn like area. There's like mm-hmm. they're like metal things that look like trees. Yeah. But they they replicate those trees from 65 million years ago, and it's just so brilliant. And that wasn't included in the theatrical cut. So when that happened, when I watched it at home with the extended cut, I was like, whoa, what was that? What did I just see? And I I had to like rewind it and go back. I was like, oh my God, they flashed it back 65 million years ago. That was so cool. And it was just mm-hmm. within a blink of an eye, within the lightning bolt, and I'm like, man, that was awesome. So, so I missed it I, today, I and that. I was like, oh, it's because I'm watching the theatrical. I didn't know it was. Oh, I didn't know it was a different. <laughs> it was in the other one because I, I have, I have the 4K, and I know it gives you the option, but yeah. I know that the and it's like 20 extra minutes. I was like, I don't have time. It's long. Yeah, it's long. <laughs> yeah, it's long, so but I, I, I think it's worth it. Honestly, I think it makes yeah, yeah. it even better of a movie. I don't know where you stand fully, but like it, it's like. I love that movie so much. It just makes it better for me. So, mm-hmm. um, and then like that on top sense. of that, I guess like you, you do have like Grant and Ellie and Malcolm, like there's like mm-hmm. one shot of them against, I think like, I think the, the Giga standing there. It's just like another iconic shot. Um, yeah. you get to see them just kind of maneuvering around this fight sequence. And I'm like, I love mm-hmm. this moment so much. It is so cool to me. So, yeah, that's going to be my number one pick. So come awesome. at me. H- hate me if you want, I guess, people. You know, whatever you want. But I, I put Jurassic World Dominion scene number one. So <laughs> that's awesome. Um, so like we were talking about earlier, we'll try to wrap it up mm-hmm. quick. But there's uh, there's a bunch of other scenes that probably didn't make our list. But give, give me like a quick yeah. rundown of like some moments that uh, were nearly in your top five. Um. So the Dilophosaurus is killing Dodson. Um, 
I oh, think yeah. finally getting the Dolphosaurus back into the franchise was a thank you, a big, big thank you. Uh, cause I, it's one of my favorite scenes in the first movie. It's one of my favorite dinosaurs. And I think it's very poetic that Dodson died the way his friend died. <laughs> um, so yeah. that one, um, I also, the, I had the T-Rex logo in Dominion, the final battle, Heck yeah. um, the Endoraptor playing dead in the fallen kingdom when it's killing the poacher. And it's it's not uh-huh. it's not playing dead, it's playing trained, I guess. Uh, but it plays with him and, and then it takes his arm away before he takes tries to take the tooth. <laughs> <laughs> it's really cute yeah. the way it does it too. Um it is. The T Rex were in front of the volcano and uh oh, blue man. versus the endoraptor. All of those moments are so good. And I think like mm-hmm. it's so hard because like I was kind of skimming through different sequences. I kind of like just scrub through the movies and just was like okay no 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 oh maybe maybe but a lot of them ended up just being like a few cool shots or whatever i was trying to get like really yeah. these like heavy scenes that like had a lot to do um but yeah those ones are all awesome i think like anything falling kingdom i wanted to include so much more um falling and kingdom so i had a lot of great moments i put it i just i kept continuing my list so i added it at like number seven so i had like the um like when sticky and owen are fighting like in that in that uh whatever that auction room and Mm -hmm. at the same time like the indoraptor is just like stalking prey while in the cage i'm like man this Mm -hmm. is such a cool sequence i love that the score is like psycho it's like you know and plus sticky's like stabbing people left and right so it, (laughs) it feels very good it feels good um and and Owen's like Jason Bourne or Indiana Jones at this moment, and I just love that. So that was really cool. Um, I also put uh, oh, actually uh, I keep going down, but uh, number eight I, I added uh, like the Raptor Hunt from Jurassic World. I loved like them just being let out of their cages and then just going through the jungle. I, I think you brought it up earlier a little bit, but like um, it's just a fun sequence, like seeing Owen ride with the Raptors. Mm-hmm. And I love like there's a shot in there of like the Raptors just like running past the camera. I love that. Yeah. It's like super cool. Um, and I just like seeing the Raptors, like the viewpoint with the cameras and everything. It's just really cool. I love that. I love it. It's like Zero Dark Raptor, I think they called it or something. So yeah, it, it's really cool. Um, I, 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 can I add to that moment? Um, yeah. My favorite moment there is when they realize the, 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 uh, Indoraptor, or not the Indoraptor, the Indominus is part Raptor. And all yeah. four of them turn around and they're like, oh, well, that's their new mama. Uh, it's like, it's so good. It's so good. Yep. Raptors found a new alpha. It's, yeah, it's yeah, just yeah. too cool of a moment when they all turn around mm-hmm. and like look and, and all the people are like, oh, we're screwed. Yeah. Uh, so cool. Yeah. I I also added on here, actually, this one was like, it was on my top five for a while. And I really wanted to include it. Um, And and you actually mentioned like a line from it, actually. It's it's the moment in Jurassic World where Mizrani confronts Dr. Wu about like what's going on with the Indominus and stuff. And like, I just, I I, I was like writing down like little quotes from it because it's just like a brilliant sequence with the dialogue. And I love that it gives us so much and just tells us all about what is like the situation on in this park? You know, who's who's running the operations here? Who's really mm-hmm. like at fault for these things? And it's just like it's a complete failure of the, of the leadership and the oversight. And you get so much information about like like Doctor Wu. He's like completely like apathetic to the situation. He's just like, oh, that's unfortunate that people are dying. Like, who cares? Uh, oh. And and like you know the 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 oversight of like, you know, who author- who authorized you to do this? And he's like, you did like you, you mm-hmm. wanted this stuff. Like the, there's so much hubris in this moment from both of them. And then it ends on like this incredible line of like monster is a relative term to a canary. A cat is a monster. We're just used to being the cat, like brilliant stuff. Like, I, I just love this. Like, ah, oh, it's so good. It's really, good. so yeah, I almost had that on my list. It was like number five for a while, but like I kept, it just kept getting bumped down and I was like, ah, I don't, I don't want to not have this on here. So I was like, we got to do these honorable mentions. <laughs> mm-hmm. No, I, I understand. Um, Miss Ronnie has really good lines throughout 
that movie. One of my favorites of his, and it's a very simple line. It's when hit Claire is showing him the the Indo, Indominus cage, and mm-hmm. it's like, is it safe? And you know, they're talking, and then he says, "Uh, we have some of the best engineers in the world." And he said, "So did Hammond." That line to me always hits me. Like it's it's like, oh, you're <laughs> right. <laughs> like, yeah, and he seems like a happened. very practical dude, but completely mm-hmm. failed on like so many levels. <laughs> the park, yeah. I guess that's just you know that's the story of Jurassic. It's just these mm-hmm. people are too arrogant for you know their own vision. I guess. Yeah. Um, did you have any other uh, honorable mentions or anything like that? Um, I'll do one more because today it, it it hit me kind of differently again. Today, the Malcolm's final. Um, his final lines in Jurassic Fall in Fallen Kingdom, where he's like, you know, we're we're gonna we're gonna come into our extinction if we don't do anything about it, and they're kind of showing us snippets of the world now and the T Rex roaring against the lion, and it's just it's just it I I really love it because I feel like it's set up what Dominion what was I, I was expecting of Dominion, even though you know it's not really what we got, um, but. I think it's a beautiful monologue that he gives us and the truth, like, yeah, if we don't fix the problem, we're probably going to end the human race. Um, and yeah, I just wanted to add that one. That is, that is a good one to end it on there. Mm-hmm. I, I feel like, yeah, that not even just for dinosaurs, but just life in general, like <laughs> we don't fix this stuff. We, you know, it's going to end us all. <laughs> Yeah. So, uh, great list. Um, that is our top five plus a few honorable mentions. I do want to see more. Like, so if anybody out there, shoot me an email, call the voicemail line, hit us up on any of the uh, social platforms. Uh, let me know what the top fives are because I, I, it's so hard for for just this trilogy alone. It was very, very difficult. And, you know, there's so many other scenes. Like, I I only listed a few there. But, like, there's so many other ones that I could have added to this list and everything. Mm -hmm. But uh, before we wrap up, uh, thank you so much for for joining me on this. It was great to have you on here. And I'm I'm glad our lists were, like, aligned, but then, like, differing a little bit. Uh, So... Where where can everybody find you and your work? Like, uh, what, what's going on with you? Uh, so first, thank you so much for having me. This was so much fun. Anytime you want to talk Jurassic, please let me know. Because <laughs> um, I'm like the only friend. <laughs> um, everyone's probably tired of me talking about dinosaurs. Uh, so, yeah, you can find me. I have a horror podcast where we talk about horror movies weekly. It is called the Horror Daddies Podcast. Uh, it's me and my best friend. We just watch a movie every week and kind of review it. Uh, and then if you want to follow me, uh, my Instagram is Carlos Warlock. Awesome. Well, yeah, thank you so much. And you know what? We definitely should do this again because uh, I don't want to, like, single you out to just top five lists or anything. But, like, I feel like we should talk, like, in the future, we should probably do an episode on, like, maybe the scariest scenes or something like that, because like they're, you know, talking about like this list here today, I feel like there's a lot that, you know, this entire franchise, we will broaden it out to the entire thing, even, uh, you know, battle of big rock or, or (laughs) or chaos theory. There's so many, you know, scarier sequences. I did an episode on it, man, so long ago now, I don't even remember what movies were out at that point, but, I think it would be time to revisit that maybe for uh, for the spooky season. So, we'll have oh, to, yeah, we'll I'll have be done. Do and I, and it, with the whole new movie coming out, which I'm excited for, it, there'll probably be a lot more. <laughs> there, um, it sounds like, yeah, we're not done anytime soon. I thought we were done. Yeah. I thought I thought that was the end. I thought that was it. So but uh, <laughs> it's going to keep going, apparently. <laughs> What, what was your what was your reaction when the new movie got announced? Like, were you expecting it at all? Was it like, did it just hit you? Like, are they serious? Like, I I had heard rumblings that things could be going that way, but at the mm-hmm. same time, I was like still completely shocked that it was happening so soon. I think it was the, yeah. the timeline that really got to me. Like, I, you know, they did it with Star Wars, where it's like the end of the saga, and then like they did it here with this. But then you hear like Colin Trevorrow say like, oh, I didn't, this is not, I didn't intend this to be the end of anything. Like that's just what the trailers did. And then Frank mm-hmm. Marshall's out there saying it's, it's the beginning of a new era. So like we, I feel like it kind of assumed it would continue, but to have very short so gap, true. you know, yeah. and then, and then to say, oh, the movie's coming out literally in one year and we haven't even started filming. <laughs> it was like, yeah. oh God, like 
What is happening? <laughs> so, I'm a little, I'm a, you know. I'm a little nervous. I'm a little nervous with that, but I hope, I hope it's good. I hope it's good. I've and got, I will still be watching feeling. it. Yeah, I don't. I can, <laughs> Rotten Tomato can come out with the worst reviews, and I'm still gonna sit down and watch it. So it's Jurassic yeah. Park. It has Jurassic in the title. I will be seated. I would be seated at the theater. So. <laughs> Me and you both. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm.